Today, we are giving you an exclusive behind the scenes look at something truly magical. We teamed up with our friends at Rogers O'Brien to create a miniature snow village for their holiday video. From the initial concept to the final touches, we're about to dive into the creative process, unveiling the artistry that went into creating and filming this enchanting winter scene. So come on into the Castleview Workshop as our team shows you how we brought this festive video to life. In the town center, we knew we needed a higher degree of detail. For example, we ended up getting trees meant for a model train diorama. And for the snow, we ended up just using flour run through a sifter. As we pull back, we used a combination of materials. For example, this fake snow that you could get at any hobby store, we used to surround the outskirts of the town. Next, we knew we wanted the village to feel like it was surrounded by a dense forest. So to do that, we got a little creative. We bought a wreath, cut it up, and glued the stems into a piece of foam. And that worked out really well. And finally, we surrounded the town in sheets of duvetine to give it a nice nighttime background. So now that the town is built, we still need to figure out how we're going to achieve the look of falling snow. The method we found that worked best was dropping flour in front of a fan and letting that blow over the village. That gave us a nice, constant, even snowfall, which was the look that we were after. But if you are going to try this effect, know that it is going to be messy. In the end, we ended up blowing about three pounds of flour all over our studio. So cover up your gear and do what you can to contain the mess. And with all that figured out, I'm now gonna pass it off to our DP, Adam, to talk about the filming process. Now that we have this wonderfully constructed village, there are a few technical things to keep in mind in order to really sell these miniatures as believable full-scale buildings. The first thing I wanna talk about is depth of field. And if you don't know what depth of field is, that is basically the range between the nearest and farthest object in your image that are in acceptable focus. This is determined by a number of factors, the size of your camera sensor, or or the aperture on your lens, or the distance from your camera to your subject. Since we are shooting miniature buildings that are just a few feet away from the camera, the depth of field is gonna be much shallower than if we were shooting full scale buildings from say, hundreds of yards away. In order to compensate for this difference, we close down our aperture to about f14, giving us a much deeper depth of field that makes it appear like we're looking at an object in the distance rather than just a few feet away from the camera. Just know that closing down your aperture ring will limit the amount of light that makes it to your sensor, so just make sure to account for that. Next, I want to talk about movement. When you're shooting miniatures, you want to focus on slow, controlled movements. Any jerky, uncontrolled movement is going to make it obvious that your subject is much smaller and closer than you're trying to make it out to be, which is why we had to be intentional with our setups. We decided to go for an aerial photography look. So we set up our Dana dolly and we shot from just outside the set, making it appear as if we were shooting from a tiny miniature drone. Not only do we have to focus on our camera movement, but we also need to be paying attention to the movement of our objects in the scene. In this case in particular, our fake snow. In reality, our snow was only falling from a few feet above our set. The time it took to get from point A to point B was minuscule. So we wanna stretch that out. By shooting at a higher frame rate of 120 frames a second, we're able to slow down our image in post, making it seem as if the snow is falling a much greater distance than it actually is. All of this just adds a sense of weight and scale that makes the entire scene feel so much bigger. Just keep in mind that shooting at a higher frame rate will require your camera movements to be faster just to compensate for the difference. Also, much like closing the aperture on your lens, shooting at a higher frame rate will darken your image significantly, which is just another reason why miniatures require so much light. Which brings me to my next point. How do we light a miniature scene? We already know that we're gonna need a lot more light to compensate for the high aperture and high frame rate. But how else does the process of lighting change on a smaller scale? In reality, it's not all that different. Just like with any scene, we want our light to be motivated. Our decisions should be informed by the story we are trying to tell, the mood we are trying to create, and the setting we are trying to establish. For this particular scene, we knew we were going to composite a moon into our establishing shot. With that motivation in mind, we opted to use our Aperture 600D with a hyper-reflector attached, backlighting our village with a powerful single-source light. We then threw up some CTB gels in front of the 600D to give us that cool blue hue that is characteristic of moonlit scenes. And finally, we added two Aperture MCs set at 3200 Kelvin to an Avenger boom arm directly above the village just to add a nice pop of warmth and contrast. Don't worry, 
I know they're in the shot right now, but we're gonna comp them out in post to make room for our moon and sky replacement. And there you have it, depth of field, movement, light. All of these concepts are things that were essential to making this miniature shoot as good as it possibly could be. And we hope that you were able to learn from some of our experience and take some of these tips into your own miniature shoot in the future.